Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jared and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a little bit of an impromptu video as I set up this computer behind me with my Cinema 4D default scene slash startup file. Uh, today I want to share some things about UI customization and just general productivity tips for setting yourself up with a good workflow in Cinema 4D. Some of these things are going to be items that change from person to person, but in general the UI customization and just general functionality of having a, a, uh, a default scene instead of just a, uh, a default layout is going to be a big thing and I want to share with you how exactly I set up my Cinema 4D to work with my workflow. So let's go ahead and get into that. To get us started, I'm gonna open a fresh scene in Cinema 4D R25, and literally all I've done since installing the program is adding in my plugins and stuff like that. So those are installed, but what we see open up here should be just the default Cinema 4D startup scene. Now that we're here, I'm just gonna close out of the start dialog that opens. And so now we have the regular default Cinema 4D startup file. The first couple of things that I'm gonna take you through are my UI layout. So that's gonna be just how I set up the buttons on the screen to work well with my workflow. That's the part that a lot of people know already. And then closer towards the end of the video, I'm gonna go through creating an actual default scene that will allow you to change project settings that you use frequently and save them so that it opens by default in Cinema 4D. So if you look at the chapters, uh, if that's all you wanna know, if you, you know, already have your layout customized like you like and you just wanna be able to start up a default scene, just go down in the chapters and you'll be able to find where that part starts. So for those who don't know, hitting Shift C uh, anywhere in Cinema 4D brings up the command search. And basically this is where we can find buttons and drag and drop them into our default layout. So I'm gonna start by adding a button to bring up the Redshift render view. Uh, if I just type in render view, I can just drag this button up here and I like to have mine by my other render settings so that all the rendering stuff kind of just stays in one place. When I'm working in a big scene and doing my lighting and stuff, I'll just pop open the Redshift render view here and drag it over to dock it in this side but I don't like to have that open by default, so that's why I just put this little button up here. Another thing I like to have available by default is a lot of my different lights that I'll use at different times. So if I uh, just search for a dome light, which is Redshift's version of an HDRI, I like to put these over here in this menu, and I will do the same thing with a uh, area light. I want a Redshift area light. I'm gonna drag these over here. And this. This side over here is just what I use for general content type stuff. So a lot of scene building commands and things of that nature. I'm gonna add my uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. Uh, Grayscale Gorilla Plus is obviously a, uh, a library of things that a lot of people use for Cinema 4D work, just contains tons of different assets. Additionally, I'm gonna bring in a matrix scatter, which is Redshift's uh, kind of default scattering. I'm gonna put that underneath the other Redshift items I have. And so anything over here, I highly recommend just kind of keeping to things that you use to build your scene, as that's what's mostly in this column over here as it is. Layout wise, I'm gonna drag this out a good bit just because I have a decent amount of screen real estate and I like to have these windows over here be a bit bigger. On this side over here, I'll put Cinema 4D program related things. So if I hit Shift C again, uh, I can type in asset browser. I don't like to have the asset browser open by default, but I do use it a good bit. So when I click this, it just kind of opens up over here and I can drag whatever I need in here and then close it again. Over here, I also like to have the timeline F curve editor. So if I drag this over here, this will pop open the F-curve editor on the timeline. So this is for animation editing. I do a good bit of animation. I like to have quick access to this particular timeline, but again, I don't really like to have it docked so that things aren't too cluttered. But having this button over here is just a great thing to have. By default in Cinema 4D R25, a couple of panes are closed that I like to have open. So hitting this little button down here will give you your coordinate system. I like to have this open by default because I do use it fairly frequently. And the material manager is also closed by default. So I like to go ahead and open that up and I'll keep it generally pretty small at first, but once I start 
uh, editing my scene, obviously this becomes much larger. One more button I'm gonna put in my scene is a button called uh, Center Axis 2. So for instance, in Cinema 4D, if you import a model and your axis is off center, you can just select your model and Center Axis 2, this little button over here, and it'll center the axis within your geometry, which I find very helpful. I'm gonna add another button in here that is new view panel. And what this button will allow you to do is open up a new uh, viewport window. So this is good for either having one that just kind of watches your camera or having on another screen to record time lapses, anything of that nature. Now, generally, I will go ahead and save this kind of thing as my startup layout. So to do so, you would just come up to this little plus icon here and you can click Save a Startup Layout, or you can go to Window, Customization, Save a Startup Layout. They'll do the same thing. So that if I click this and then go File, New Project, you can see we maintain this uh, layout that we just built where we have all of our things as opposed to just having the standard Cinema 4D layout. So now we're gonna go about creating our actual default scene, which will allow us to save render settings, save project settings, even save you know objects and materials if you want to as default when opening a new Cinema 4D scene. I'm gonna start with my render settings. So I like to save presets of my render settings down here that I use on a frequent basis, so this will be different aspect ratios, different sampling, sometimes even different renderers, given I have Redshift and Octane that I use uh, interchangeably sometimes. So what I'm gonna do, for example, is just create a 1920 by 817, which is a 21 by nine aspect ratio. Uh, set my resolution to 300. This will be a still. Um, this will be a still preset, so I'm gonna leave this on current frame. I'm gonna change this to Redshift, come into my settings, go advanced, set my passes to 400 or something. I'll go sixes around the board here. Uh, GI, everything should be good for the most part. And you just change this to whatever your, you know, most frequently used render settings are don't want denoising. And so then uh, I will just come down to render settings, uh, save preset, and I will call this redshift 1080 uh, still. And then that will save by default. And so now if I go render setting, load preset, redshift 1080 still, um, this will be the new default for when this is ticked. So I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm gonna change my frame range to all frames and this will be my animation preset. Uh, I will change my frame rate to 24 and then uh, that's a good reminder to also come into Cinema 4D, hit Control D, change your project settings to 24. This will also save in your default scene I'm gonna set my frame range here to 400 because that's a common uh, preset that I'll use for different shots. I'll come into my Redshift tab, change my samples or progressive passes to like 200 for better frame times. Come in, turn motion blur on, leave all this on default, and then I'm good to render setting, save preset, Redshift, uh, 1080, 1080 animation, save that out, and then I will just delete uh, this setting here and go ahead and load in that animation preset. And so now if I bounce between these, you can see we have our different uh, render settings that are set up for whatever we wanna use them for. So by default, I like to have a uh, viewport preview, so if I come into my renderer and change this to viewport renderer, uh, I like to have it be the full, you know, resolution of whatever I'm working on, um, but I just like to have it be the viewport render, so I will just create uh, 
a so I'll just create a file that looks something like this and you can take any of these here that you want and then I'll just rename this to uh, preview render and that will be what I have ticked on by default because usually if I'm doing a scene viewing animations or something like that uh, I will do many passes of this kind of file before anything else. Now I'm just going to take uh, these two things that I have created here and duplicate them, come up into my output, and I'm going to multiply these numbers by two to generate a 4K preset of all the same things. And then you can save these as actual presets if you want to, but I tend to just rename mine for most things. And so this is my render settings done. Project settings over here are done. Frame times are set, or rather number of frames. My layout is exactly how I want it to open up. So the last thing I'm gonna do before being done with this file and saving the default scene is come into my view, uh, in my viewport and hit configure. And that'll bring up these settings over here. And I wanna come over to the save frames file I want to take the opacity under this section that says tinted down here and make this much darker. This will take these uh, black borders that are in your render region and make them darker. I just like to have a very clear picture of exactly what's going on. So I won't make them completely black, but I will take them around 80%. And I like to have that saved. Uh, in these areas here, you can also kind of set other view options that will default your viewport layout. For example, I like to take my shading over here and change it to garage shading lines, or however you pronounce this. This is just my preferred method of viewing objects in the viewport. I like to be able to, for instance, you know, see their faces. And so this is how I prefer to set up my Cinema 4D file by default. And so to save this, all you have to do is come up here to Window, Customization, and click Save as Default Scene. And then you're good to go. If I close out of this window completely and then open it back up, you will see as things load in that Cinema 4D remembers all the things that we just did and has created a whole new default file for us. So we have all these buttons that are useful to us. All of our render settings are saved that we created earlier. And in general, we're just set up for a much more efficient time in Cinema 4D. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I uh, hope it was a quick and easy watch. I uh, just wanted to share some tips on improving your workflow in Cinema 4D. If this helped you out, leave me a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. All subscriptions are appreciated, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.